this alley drill here. This is, I would say we use this, and I'll explain here, we use this every Tuesday and Thursday, or Tuesday and Wednesday this season. I don't think we missed it once. Um, even when we're a little banged up, okay? Unfortunately, when I'm diagramming this up, I couldn't drop something right down the middle. Imagine this is like half line, okay? We're cutting half. Let's only focus on the right here. Okay, this is set up for offense here, but we've got a center, we've got our guard tackle, we've got a backfield, and we've got a, a half line defense set up there, right? Okay, we're running power over there. So right now we're about to do a live tackle situation, and we've got um, our fullbacks are getting the mix, our tailbacks are getting the mix, quarterbacks getting good skill work and handoff, things like that. We're getting snap exchange, okay? And um, you know we run. Power is a power concept, power gap concepts. We can vary based on what we're doing that week, and whether we have two fullbacks or one, or what, what are we doing? Um, but that's, that's a big majority of our offense. So it's high volume, okay? If you have a kid that is, maybe just he's an old lineman, he's not really a D lineman. Well then guess what, he stays with the old lineman the whole time during this drill. If you get a guy that's just a D lineman, he doesn't really play old line, okay? Then he's rotating in every other snap on the defensive side, okay? If and if you've got two-way players, which we have to have a lot of them, it's a necessity. Um, you know, I, I said, I played at City High School in Iowa City. We had about 1,700 kids. It's a little bigger school. We have a lot of two-way players because there's just a lot of situations where um, when the chips are down, you can't justify not having that kid on the field. Some people feel differently and tune up, and that's that's great. And I've been on the I've been on the losing end of the two team that just wore us down over the course of the whole whole game too. So I understand, but that's kind of a philosophy. Thing. So um, we want to get these kids in, and uh, we're just running power on this half. So we'll run a snap. We'll run power over here. Okay. The defense knows power is coming. Okay. The offense knows what they're running, and we've got maybe we've got. Well, this is how we do it to be really efficient. We'll have a center stand back here, okay? Guard, tackle, tight end, a back, ready to reload the drill right away when we're done, okay? So we'll run one, okay? And then, while that's getting reloaded, we'll have the other side. We've got, our, we've got a couple of receivers out here. We've got our guy in the slot, our quarterback, with a center exchange there too, okay? He's gonna turn, he's gonna fire a bubble out there. We've got our, uh, our bubble concept on this side, and they're working on, our, our TVs are getting great work for open field stuff. Our receivers are getting great stock blocking. Great, they're coming down cracking on the bubble if we're doing that that week. Um, and we can tailor this to, to whatever we're doing that week, okay? And sometimes it's power and it's bubble. Sometimes it's uh, toss and it's jet sweep. Sometimes it's, um, you know, we just have our, our, like our inside zone play or our outside zone play and uh, we'll, if, we, if we're running, if we're really working a counter, we, we can even have a guy that pops in over here and we work our counter action coming back, a little weak counter coming back on the other side. So we're, we're getting a high volume of repetition and we're, and we're tackling, okay? So the field's cut in half. Um, that's, that's really, on, on, a, on an offensive day, that's kind of how we're set up. On a defensive day, now, maybe we're putting some scout team stuff in there, okay? We're playing an option team. What do option teams like to do to stretch you out? They run rocket toss, right? Okay. If you're not an option team, and you ever watch your scout team try to run a rocket toss, you'll know what I'm saying. They can't do it. So maybe we have rock, I have rocket toss four times in the script, and I'm lucky if one of them looks like a rocket toss. Okay, because they can't get that angle, that flat angle, that ball getting outside. That's all I'm talking about, the orbit motion and kicking it out there. So maybe on the defensive day, on one side, we're doing rocket toss, and the guy that's going to be the scout team quarterback is the guy whipping the rocket toss out there. So by the time we get to team, he's done it 15, 20 times, okay? And, and sometimes the volume's higher or lower. It depends on how many kids are uh, healthy. Sometimes we're doing this for five minutes. Sometimes we're doing this for 10 or 15, all right? And um, we, uh, so we can use that opportunity to maybe work some things we don't see, give the scout team some high rep stuff um, that they can do to prepare. <laughs> and a lot of stuff is, is just comes down to one-on-one -on -one blocking and tackling. So um, there's the open field concepts on one side, usually a closed field concept or a tight concept on the other side, okay? I, I, I believe that's the best, if you had to ask me what's the best drill you guys have in practice it, that it works on tackling, it's this one. Um, and uh, so, um, is that kind of clear how I have that set up? Is there any questions with that one? Because, yeah. You're going to be down rock, doing them all the way down. Yes, yes, yep. It'll be a quick whistle, but we're tackling, yeah. 
Um, if we just try to butt up on that, um, sometimes it's bad habits. People, it's tough to do the low tackle stuff in thud. So we save that stuff for um, for your full tackle seconds. Like I said, the time <coughs> component isn't super high, um, but I think we get a lot done in that short period of time. Um, sometimes by week seven or week eight, you know, you get those kids. Uh, we, we all have those, the seniors that, like I said, maybe don't don't play quite as much. They're, this is the thing they're looking forward to. They're at eighth hour math class. And they can't wait till we come out here and run the out. Okay, because that's going to be. They know that they're going to be on the kickoff team that week. Roles are pretty well solidified. Maybe they're a backup, they're a backup linebacker somewhere, but they know that they're getting some team reps. But this is this is their time to to get after it, and they look forward to practice. Their attitude's higher, so our team's attitude's higher. All right, so we don't have the the that mobiness that can kind of set in as the season. It's a long season, and as it goes on, we have all the kids engaged. Will, will this replace a full a full live team session? Is, is the team then sometimes maybe a little more more thud because you've got your life? Well, we are we're, we're, when we get into the team, we are definitely more thud. We're not in, in a full team where we're we're trying to teach full fits and stuff. That's the emphasis when we get the team later on. We're probably thudding more in team. Our tackling happens within the drills. And um, one thing that we we do a better job of because maybe we'll have a coach running, you know, coach behind the offense, coach behind the offense on each side, and defense on each side. Try to get as many of your systems as possible. Finding a kid to point out and, and you know make sure that um, make sure that we're, we're recognizing them all right, when they when they do good things in these drills. Um, we also try to make sure that nobody goes two times in a row. The other thing that you'll you'll, you'll see a little bit and it's good good info to know early on is who steps in and who doesn't. Okay, they're not going to step in in this drill. They're not going to step in and, uh, and and run your power here. Good luck having them run the power play against a really good team on Friday because they're not going to do it there either. You might put them out there, but they're not. They're, if they don't want to be in there and they don't want to do that, then you got to find another role for them because they're, they're just not going to help you on Friday. So, um, for a kid that maybe has a tough time memorizing plays, can't remember them, this is pretty. This is pretty. Uh, this is pretty user friendly. Okay, I'm just. I'm a fullback. I watched what the fullback just did. He just did the same thing every single time. Okay, so now if I'm, I'm the kid that, boy, I've tried to figure out what right, you know, in our offense, what right and left means, and it's taken me a year to figure that out. And I have no idea when we're talking and we're, we're calling 36 power, what, what, what does that mean? Okay, well now, that piece of the equation, that inhibition to finding out whether that kick can tackle or not, is removed. Because he's just got to watch what the fullback's doing, doing. Right? or he's got to watch what the linebacker's doing, and go do it. Okay, so that's... I, I feel strongly that that's one of our that that's, that's our best drill. Coach, Here's in that drill, do you just rotate the offensive guys out then, or do you? We do both. Both. Yep. So no limiting <coughs> position, and, and this this you might have to tweak this depending on the number of the roster. Too. Um, but we say that all positions are reloaded after every time, and they can go every other, and that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, we don't want the same guy taking all the mic reps. Right. We take a mic rep, the number two mic gets in. If we've got a number three mic that week, maybe he can get in there and try to try to work it. Um, and usually at some positions there's more rotation than others. Um, and, and we do encourage guys that if, if they are a starter on one side of the ball, make sure they get most of the reps on one side. Um, but this is great for open field blocking too. Uh, I believe the offensive line too. You know, our players aren't too platoon, neither are our coaches. So um, as far as getting a, um, a tackle to come downhill and block somebody in space or something like that, this is a good drill too. And, and defense kind of knows it's coming, so um, a little bit. A little bit of uh, just for reference, coach. How many guys do you have on your practice squad? Your, your varsity team. Full varsity roster. Uh, let's see. We are. It's not. It's not huge. Um, for a school our size, it's not huge. We are about fifty. Sophomores and seniors. Sophomores and seniors. Yeah, freshmen seven. So I think program wide, we had about seventy. So we have about twenty or seventy-two. So twenty-two freshmen. It's about fifty. Um, that, that, that changes from year to year quite a bit. Um, but I'd say that's a pretty good average, too, for our years. We've had a couple years where we had more, and years where we had less. If we have less, we just don't do this for as long. Um, if we, get the, we get the work done in a short period of time. You modify this. Actually, we worked the other direction. This is where the drill started this way, and then we, uh, we applied it to full team. Um, this, this, this alley drill, we, put, we took like pennies down, 
We didn't like cones because they're sitting there. Um, bags you can trip over to. You can use bags if you want to. Um, and you have like a, a half field situation or between hash situation. Our practice field isn't close to regulation width at all, so uh, our, we don't really use the lines around the field that much for stuff like this. Um, but this kind of works. This is the same kind of concept, but it's not. It's not in the context of running any kind of offensive play. Okay, this is tr this is a true drill. That's all it is. Okay, um, running back starts with the ball. Could be a wide receiver too. We got a fullback there. We've got some sort of skill position, um, skill position or tight end here on either side, blocking a some sort of D end or linebacker. Got a free linebacker, two receivers that are about ten yards downfield across from two DBs. Okay, they're working on staying engaged. Um, the run, the ball carrier has to stay within. I'm just going to use the hashes here as kind of our boundary. There is a boundary to find, and um, they can go right or left. And they're encouraged to, within the constraints of the drill, cut, make make some moves. Okay, um, you find some really good open field ball carriers here in this. Um, we see some kids really thriving in this, and then we turn on them and they're running jet skis for us. We can also find out um, who can be a safety. Um, Safety stand out in this a lot because they have to cut. They have to usually get off somebody that's in their face, come downhill, and make a tackle in the open field. And we see guys just starting to wrap legs up and and put pretty good ball carriers down. Then we're we got to find a spot for that kid because he can do it. And we found kids that are not um, maybe were not on our radar as much because they were uncomfortable with coverage. They were uncomfortable with things like that. We can find a kid that can tackle like that. We'll make the coverage work. Okay. Um, we, uh, boy, I mean, we would kill for uh, you know a, a really uh, a true safety last year. I had a linebacker playing back there most of the year, so um, you know, we were a pretty good tackle team actually last year. The problem was is if you could run away from us, we couldn't catch you. So um, you're, you know that's something that I think hopefully will be better next year, and uh, we can find some more. We have some young guys that kind of really started showing themselves in the drill like this that I think that we'll be ready to step up and fill those roles.